On today's The Doctor is In, the topic is hypertension. There is no ideal blood pressure reading, but there is an accepted range of normal readings. And today we're going to see where ours, specifically mine, falls and whether or not you need to make some lifestyle changes. Dr. Ackerman is one of the First Coast's leading doctors. He is here today to talk about hypertension. Thank you so much for, for being here. We're going to talk about what my blood pressure is. Yep, yep. <laughs> Notice we did it a little bit earlier in the morning. The later we go, the, little, the higher the blood pressure gets. A little more coffee in you now. Yeah, we'll yeah, see yeah what exactly. Happens. We're going to see. Okay, but first of all, let's just talk about what the health implications are that are associated with having high blood pressure. So if you have high blood pressure that's not controlled, you know, controlled high blood pressure is one that we find that if patients who we've diagnosed as being hypertensive, if we control their pressure, we don't have the side effects or symptoms of high blood pressure. But uncontrolled high blood pressure leads to strokes, heart failure, heart attacks, and kidney failure. So it's one of those things that if you have high blood pressure, you need to do something about it. You can't leave it unchecked. Right. Now, you want how, to get it treated. So how does high blood pressure then differ from high cholesterol? So we talked about high cholesterol in the past, and I told you the same things. Mm -hmm. Stroke, hypertension, yeah. heart failure, all those things with cholesterol. Because they're very similar in that both the high blood pressure and high cholesterol affects the way that blood flows through your arteries. And so hence they cause similar problems. Healthy arteries have these nice smooth inner walls, and when blood flows through our arteries, it's called laminar flow, normal flow, laminar flow. It goes through nice and smooth, but when there's when you have high blood pressure, too much pressure, the blood starts getting all gurgly in there. It starts going very fast through the vessels, and we call that turbulent flow. So we get kind of some little uh, eddies forming on the side of the uh, uh, of the blood, but between the, the vessel, the artery rather, and the blood, we get some eddies forming. <clears throat> When we high cholesterol, we get these plaques forming on the inside of the blood vessels. And the same thing, we get this turbulent flow, these eddies that form. And when you have blood going through the artery and little eddies are forming around the periphery by the blood vessel walls, that causes some damage to the blood vessel walls. Some small little tears, and if you get a small little tear in the blood vessel wall, a clot could form there, and a clot then gets causes more problems. The clot could break off and cause a stroke yeah. and all Heart these other things. Yeah, and sure. also the, these, these, the clots will, will harden on the blood vessel wall, and the blood vessel won't be as, um, as expansile. And so the, the heart has to give that much more pressure to get the blood, flu, the blood through the vessels. It's, it's a, just a downhill course. Okay. So when you go to your doctor's office, or you can even get these readings, I guess, if you go to some pharmacies, they have them there, mm -hmm. um, you'll get two numbers, X over X. But what, do, what does that mean? So there's two numbers. The upper number is called the systolic pressure. And the lower number is called the diastolic pressure. So you hear 120 over 80 is a right. number a lot of people hear because that's basically normal blood pressure. So the higher number, the 120 number, is the pressure when the heart's beating. So that's the maximum pressure coming out of the heart. So when the heart's beating, it pushes the blood out, and that pressure in there, the, the maximum pressure, that's the systolic pressure. So if the arteries don't stretch and move as they should, it takes a lot more pressure to get that blood flowing, and so that pressure will be higher. And then the diastolic number, the lower number, is when the heart's not pumping, relaxing. So each beat, it pumps and relaxes, pumps and relaxes. So that relaxing part, that's the, 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 the pressure, the diastolic number, the lower number, is the mean pressure in the arteries, I'm sorry, it's the pressure in the arteries when the heart is not pumping. So that's really the pressure of the system. And that's really the more important number. The diastolic number is what we look at as a better definition of high blood pressure than the systolic number. They're both important. Yeah. But the diastolic, that lower number, if the pressure in your system is very high, then you at baseline, then you're going to have problems. So what number, is there a magic number you're trying to shoot for? I mean, we're well, going to do mine see. and, and let's figure it out here live on the air, but what, what are we... Well, let's, before I give you the magic number, Casey... Yeah, okay, let's better, figure out what my magic let's number see is. see what your number is. All right. Be it magic or not. Yeah, right. Hold this for me. Uh, and then what, talk us through what you're doing. So this, this is, is a sphygmometer. This is the old-fashioned... Um, way to measure blood pressure. A lot of clinics and hospitals you go to now, they'll put an electric one on and the nurse hits the button and then goes away and comes sure. back and reads the reading. But I like, to, I'm more of a purist. I like to know, it, this is more accurate if you do it yourself. And so what I'm doing, I'm listening at your artery that goes through here. It's the brachial artery that goes through your arm. And first I close off the blood to go to your arm. And as I'm doing that, I'm looking at the pressure. I'm going up to about above, above where I expect it to be. And then I'm very slowly letting the pressure go down. And as I do, I'm listening for some beats. And I first hear your beats at about 118. So the systolic pressure is 118. So if we could be quiet, I could hear better here.
Oh, you're good. 118 over 65. That, that's good. That's real good. You are. You're in good. Good, because I just had French fries. <laughs> And it's probably not the best thing because we're going to talk about that diet. I'm sure and making sure you're eating the right diet, French obviously. Fries, is French fries aren't going to be so good. Not that, so, so there, but there is no magic number. Give us an people. Well, normal blood okay. pressure is 120 over 80. So I told you, I think I just said yours is 118 over 65. So that's good. So the, your systolic pressure, the maximum pressure, isn't all that high to get blood flowing. And when your heart's relaxed, you have a nice low pressure. So 120 over 80, that's normal. Anything lower than that. We don't want to see the lower number be too low because that's, there's other problems okay. with that. But yours is fine. And But prehypertension is when we start to see it go, the, the diastolic number being between 100, between, I'm sorry, 80 and 89. So that's prehypertension. And then hypertension is when the diastolic number is above 90. Also, we look at the systolic number. So, so normal pressure is 120 over 80. Yeah. Prehypertension is 120 over 80 to 140 over 90 and hypertension is above 140 over 90. All right, bottom line, 30 seconds. If someone has high blood pressure, what can they do to be lowering it? Number one, reduce your salt intake. Okay, the french fry is not good. Right, not, well, french fry is without salt. What's up? Okay. Um, although I'm not sure of the fat yeah, in it's, the it's fryer. Yeah, it's bad so all the way around, but it tasted good going That's down. right. Yeah. yeah <laughs> it is what it is. Eat your broccoli. <laughs> um, exercise yep. and weight loss. Weight loss of five or 10% can drop your blood pressure numbers down by five points. And also alcohol consumption. Too much alcohol consumption it increases your blood pressure. Caffeine, tell to Nick about that double whatever triple he's drinking, shot. Mm -hmm. triple shot yep. thing. And have your blood pressure checked regularly to catch signs of early heart disease. All right, Dr. Ackerman, thanks so much. Appreciate you being Thank here. You if you want me. any more information or if you have any questions for Dr. Ackerman, very simple, you can go to his website or you can go to his Facebook page. So you can go there by visiting facebook.com slash post oncology and ask whatever question you may have on your mind.